Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today uh, for a quick introduction to Sensata's new Resinex uh, refrigerant leak detection sensor, uh, which we developed over the past couple of years to deliver manufacturers of HVAC and uh, refrigeration equipment, superior reliability, lifetime, and peace of mind. My name is Richard Rodriguez. I am the global product manager uh, for, at Sensata, responsible for gas sensing technologies, uh, where I am responsible for working with uh, manufacturers of HVAC and refrigeration equipment and finding uh, the right solutions uh, to endure the difficult conditions that you um, have to place sensors into. So I have a, a quick presentation. Uh, we'll start off with a quick introduction into, or quick intro into the um, shift away from hydrofluorocarbon-based refrigerants uh, towards uh, low uh, GWP or low global warming uh, potential versions of refrigerants. Um, then I will introduce you to our new solution uh, for these applications. Uh, talk to you about the uh, technology selected by Sensata and walk you through why we made those, those selections and hope that uh, it impresses you or get, strikes you enough as a, uh, one, a lesson, maybe uh, instructs you on things to look out for as you may embark on this journey towards low GWP refrigerants, uh, but also give you some ideas on how to overcome them. So I'm sure we uh, all are aware of the move away from uh, HFC-based refrigerants. Uh, everywhere you walk, you see signs for R32, R290, so basically flammable refrigerants, uh, which are being adopted due to their um, lower impact on global warming. Uh, the fun part of these refrigerants is that they are flammable, and because of that, uh, they introduce uh, new safety concerns, and with those safety concerns, uh, you have uh, the need to uh, implement new safety systems or mitigation and, uh, to ensure continued safe operation for the lifetime of the system. Uh, globally, this is led by IEC 60335-2-40 uh, for uh, residential applications, and then there are offshoots of that uh, for uh, more specific applications in commercial or different um, different types of industries. Uh, and you, uh, we've, we've been working over the past couple of years uh, focused on the North American version, so uh, UL, UL uh, version of this standard, uh, which uh, puts it on the manufacturer and its development team to determine where a refrigerant leak detection sensor would be required. And this would, determination would be made based on the location where a refrigerant leak is most likely to occur because of the large number of bends uh, in um, the copper tubing, uh, high temperature swings, so from low to high temperatures, and condensation, uh, these leaks are most likely to occur in the evaporator coil, which is a, an environment that is very unfriendly for sensors in general and uh, electronics, uh, electrical sensors uh, more specifically. Uh, and this is where concerns for development teams uh, for these systems really come into play. So as uh, development teams for the, this equipment uh, begin to uh, begin their search for refrigerant leak detection solutions, uh, a lot of their questions or concerns really uh, start uh, with uh, the impact of a new sensor, a new possible failure point on the lifetime and the reliability of the system. Questions like, will this uh, sensor impact the lifetime of my product? Will it impact uh, the... the contentment of my customers? Will my customers be forced to plan for additional maintenance, whether it be replacing a leak detection sensor or a calibration? Will the sensor that I choose survive and uh, maintain accuracy over the long term in high heat exposure, condensing environments? Or will it create additional nuisances for my customers, such as false alarms and uh, risk of poisoning? And with that, I'm pleased to introduce you to Sensato's Resinex uh, leak detection sensor, uh, which features the speed of sound technology uh, for determining whether there is refrigerant present in the atmosphere. It's a new type of uh, sensor used in the uh, very different, quite different from uh, the t standard gas sensing technologies that you may uh, be familiar with. 
Uh, so I'll get into that in a little more detail in a few minutes. Uh, but the sensor boasts a 15, uh, greater than 50 unit lifetime. Uh, so it will not be a life-limiting device for your system. It is highly accurate with onboard temperature and relative humidity compensation. So we can ensure high accuracy from the desert in um, Death Valley in the United States, which is well below sea level, to the top of a building in uh, Colorado, uh, where you're well above uh, sea level. So within that entire range, we maintain high accuracy. It is not prone to false alarms or fouling from many fouling gases uh, or the actual uh, refrigerant that it is meant to detect. But because Sensata, as a leader, global leader, in working with uh, many of the leading manufacturers of HVAC and refrigeration equipment, we wanted to maintain our commitment and our uh, quality uh, to our customers. So we built this ground up for HVAC environments. Again, as mentioned, this is not an easy an, an environment to overcome. So everything about this product was de uh, developed and selected for this environment. So the operating temperature range here, negative 40 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius, and uh, good in operation up to condensed 100% uh, relative humidity with condensation and splashing water from the drip pan. On top of that, it's got some of the fastest startup time uh, out of the options you may have, which increases uh, safety in the event of a power outage. So if you have a power outage and you're worried about a leak when the system powers back on, uh, starting a full startup time of under five seconds means that we limit the amount of time that that unsafe condition may be in place. It's got fast response time. So, um, Industry-leading response time also increases your uh, not only safety, but flexibility when designing the product into your system. It gives you a little more flexibility as to how close you actually need to be to the uh, source of the leak. It is low power, so consumed at maximum input current of 40 milliamps. Gives you a little more flexibility when developing the supporting electronics or the control board. It gives you less power to worry about, less heat to have to dissipate. And it is temperature tolerant up to 105 degrees Celsius for short periods of time. Now, you may wonder, OK, if you're good up to 85 degrees C, why, why go up to 105 degrees C? Well, we've been working with some of the leading manufacturers for some time here. And as we've done that, we, we continuously learn about new potential sources of issues. And one of these is, what happens when there's another failure elsewhere in my product? What, ha what kind of impact might that have on the uh, sensor? So one specific example of this uh, that led us to making, taking a, a very robust product and making it more robust was the situation where a, a customer uh, shared that they were building a um, cooling unit that is meant to be uh, used in combination with uh, a boiler. And they're both pumping hot air or a furnace, excuse me, both putting, using the same ductwork. The evaporator coil is actually going to be placed quite uh, in close proximity to the heat exchanger for the heating system. In normal operation, this is OK. And in the event that a filter is clogged or the blower stops operating, the nor typical temperatures that the heat exchangers are going to see that after it loses that airflow to, uh, that is required to maintain that uh, consistent temperature, that's not going to be there. So your temperatures are going to spike. They're going to spike for three to five minutes until the safety, the temperature uh, trig, uh, stops, kick in, and the system powers down. But for that short period of time, the evaporator coils and thus the sensor would be exposed to temperatures of up to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. So anyone working on this type of system would know that wiring in this area also has to be rated for 105 degrees Celsius. So we got to thinking and realized that, OK, so now you're talking about an evaporator coil that is, go that is already in tough conditions, but now is going to be stressed by uh, temperatures that it was not meant to see. So the likelihood may increase that there is a, a leak. But now this leak is also happening when you've got high temperatures right near there, a potential ignition, ignition source. 
And our development team thought that, well, this is the only real way to handle this is to make our sensor not only capable of surviving that environment, but providing good data for that period of time. And, there, and because of that, we, we strive for more and gave you 105 degrees Celsius for intermittent periods of time. All right, so I mentioned we use the speed of sound technology. It is not a, a uh, typical technology out there. Uh, and uh, so we got to work, uh, um, to work on selecting or choosing through all the technologies available to us. This is something that was not available uh, for, um, uh, for your typical gas sensing um, applications. Uh, but why did we do this? Well, first, robustness and reliability, longevity. Uh, the product, the sense element, is virtually a complete solid state design comprised of two aluminum discs with virtually no motion. Very small vibrations at a very low rate uh, means that there is virtually no mechanical stress. I mentioned the low power consumption earlier. Low input current means that there is little electrical stress. It does not depend on any type of chemical reactions like other technologies do, meaning there is little to no chemical stress on the product. All this adds up to a sense element that throughout the lifetime it is intended for sees virtually no stress, nothing leading to the need to recalibrate or swap out the product over the lifetime of the refrigeration unit. And then fast response time, because it is con continuously emitting pulses of sound, it is detecting or looking for changes to the atmosphere in near real time. And this allows you to have a very rapid response time, which gives you a little more flexibility or a little more time on the back end after you get the signal for your system to start initiate the mitigation uh, measures and clear out the um, refrigeration. Uh, I'm sorry, the refrigerant. Now, how does this work? How does it actually detect uh, gas? So the You've got a cavity with two aluminum discs, as I mentioned. Uh, one of those aluminum discs is actually exposed or allowing the atmospheric air into the cavity, and you're sending pulses of sound waves from one side of the cavity, and that's getting received by the other. As the time required for the wave to travel through that cavity changes, the sensor detects that the composition of air changes. As refrigerant is introduced into that cavity, the sensor realizes that there is a leak, that, uh, leak because uh, the speed of sound decreases. Well, I mentioned it was a short presentation. I uh, will we'll recap. So as we, we mentioned, uh, the world is moving towards uh, these flammable refrigerants. Uh, you've got concerns to, uh, to work through, such as lifetime and reliability accuracy, meeting the demands of the application, and uh, maintaining the expectations of your customer for a product that will uh, last uh, as long as they expect it to. Um, and uh, since I've developed a sensor, we truly believe will answer most of these or all of these concerns for you. And um, if you are interested in learning more, be sure to come visit us over in Hall 5 at uh, booth 322A. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you in a little more detail. But I do believe I may have a couple, of uh, uh, a couple minutes for questions, if you have any. I'm sorry? The, this is... This is being certified for A2L refrigerants uh, currently. So um, y y under edition three of UL, it's currently uh, under certification. And then we're waiting for edition four to be finalized or put into, um, a, which should be in November, I expect. And then we'll, we'll initiate that. I'm sorry? Uh, this is suitable for refrigeration and uh, air conditioning, heat pumps, yes. Yeah. So if it's got a tough conditions to go into, the, this is the application it was developed for. I'm sorry? 
Yes, yes. So this will, this will detect up to 100% LFL. So for example, uh, in testing for edition three, the test conditions, the exposure conditions uh, for response time require you to sub put, place the sensor in 100% um, LFL. And then it has to make, it detect it within, uh, um, the, within the allotted time frame and then go return back to normal operation. Well, thank you. I think my time's up. I hope to see some of you over at our booth later today.